guys, I'm Jenny. Welcome to my channel where we focus on using ordinary materials to make beautiful things. Um, we're back with another Motivational Monday. Yay! Um, I have done a little bit of advance work because I didn't really think you'd want to watch me uh, lay out a, a grid on this paper. So you might recall last week we skipped a page ahead and did this one because I didn't want to do the music paper yet because I had a, a quote about mountains and I wanted to do something with that. But this week, we're going to go back to the music paper. So this is what I started with on the other side is I had this piece of, of music paper. I just have a larger piece of, of heavy cardboard here um, so that I can write on this without feeling the bumpiness of this underneath it. Uh, so I've got that for a writing board. So I have done a couple of things. First, I covered the piece of paper with a really thin layer, one layer, one ply layer of white napkin. And I did that because I knew I was going to be drawing a grid. I'm going to be writing some things on here. We're going to do something a little bit different today. And I didn't think I would be able to write very well with the music prominent as dark as this, I thought I would be seeing these lines and they would kind of interfere with my ability to make a grid and write letters. So I, I put the napkin on to just knock the music into the background. It's still there, but it's not in the foreground. It's, it's in the background. I could have done this with white gesso, um, but I didn't because I tend to be a little heavy handed with the gesso and I was afraid I would get too much on it and and block out too much of the music paper because I don't want to do that either. Oh, it looks like we might be doing, you know, crafting with cats today. <laughs> so I have selected a, a quote that is about music, but I think it applies to uh, every kind of art. Um, and the quote is, I don't sing because I'm happy. I'm happy because I sing. And I think this is true for any kind of art um, that, that you may do, any kind of art that you may practice. Excuse me a minute, I'm gonna have to put my kitty cat out because she's chewing on things. All right, crafting with cats. Out you go, sweetie. Okay. Apologize for that interruption. Um, I was what I was saying was I don't I don't think this applies just to music just to singing um, it applies to every kind of art that we do it's not we don't do the art because it makes us happy you know because we're happy it makes us happy to do the art um, at least I know that's true for me and pretty much everybody uh, that I know who does any kind of art it's not it's not because oh I'm so happy I think I'll do that. It's, it's, I need to be happy. So I'm going to do that. So I'm hoping that, um, working in your journal every week, um, I hope you have a journal to work in and I'm hoping that working in it, uh, at least once a week, maybe more, hopefully brings you some happiness. Um, it brings me a lot of happiness. <laughs> My husband and I over the weekend, uh, were talking about what does it mean to be happy? You know, like this philosophical discussion of what is happiness? What does it mean to be happy? What does it take to be happy? What makes us happy? Uh, so when I saw this quote with, coupled with the music paper, I knew it was the one that I wanted to, to work on today. So we're going to do something today that is inspired by an artist. His name is Paul Clay. It's actually spelled K-L-E-E, -E, so it looks like it should be Klee, but it's pronounced Clay. Um, I think he's German and Swiss. Um, I'm not, not sure, but uh, if you want to look him up, you can certainly see some of his work. One of his uh, things that he's famous for is using letters to create abstract art. Uh, one of his pieces, he uses a poem and he puts the letters and he paints different things around the letters, just, you know, blocks of color with different parts of the letters. And so we're going to kind of swipe his idea today to do that, but we're going to do it on the music paper. Um, and so I have laid out a grid to help me with the lettering. 
and I have kind of worked out where the quote goes on the grid so that I know <laughs> because heaven knows I would I would probably not be able to do it on the fly. Um, so I didn't think you would mind if I if I filled in that grid uh, before before turning on the camera because it was a little tedious and you know it's just a grid. I, I mean I literally just used a ruler and measured off the grid. I did uh, leave some space around now. Uh, Clay's work doesn't really have borders. Um, he fills the whole canvas and if you look at a lot of other things inspired by Clay, uh, you'll see that they don't have borders, but I, I thought in our notebook that the border might be helpful. It would be really hard to get all the way up to the edge. And then it might make a nice, a nice visual piece of art here too. So my thought is, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in the lettering and then I'm gonna try out these watercolors. I have these uh, inexpensive watercolors that I've never used. Um, so I'm gonna try them out and see how they work. And uh, there's a brush here, but I also have another brush. Uh, and so we'll kind of fill it in. And I'm hoping that the watercolors will be pale enough that you'll be able to see the music behind it. Um, in addition, since I put the napkin on top, I also put um, a layer of uh, kind of sealer. It wasn't Mod Podge. Uh, I use um, a different kind of glue, uh, but I put I put this kind of sealed the top. So I'm hoping that that will, will keep it from soaking all the way through the paper as well. All right, so you can see that I have worked out my grid here. I'm gonna skip the top line and start on the second line so that I end on this line because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of text, but I have nine lines in the grid. So in order to make the boxes or the, the shapes that we're going to paint, you have to make sure the letter touches all of the sides, unless it's like an eye or something, because then that would still touch the top and the bottom and cut it in half. Um, otherwise, you, you need to make sure the letter touches all four sides of the box. You can do it without a box if you if you just do like double lines. If you did this and made sure it touched top to bottom in, in larger letters. Um, but the grid does help you kind of work out where the, where the words go, where the, the letters go across. So if you want to give that a try, certainly do so. All right, so I'm skipping the top line. I'm skipping these two and the thing about this is it ends up being an abstract piece of art where you can see the words but you might have to look for them because they're part of the boxes right so that's I space So I just want to fill these and I'm, I'm gonna kind of ignore punctuation. So I'm not gonna put in the apostrophe on don't and the period at the end, that kind of stuff. And I just screwed that one up. <laughs> oh, I should have gone to that corner. Should have done this in pencil. Okay, lesson number one, do it in pencil because I didn't, but that's okay. We will make it part of the abstraction. All right, so if you do it like me and you do it in pen and you mess it up, then make it part of what's abstract, All right? So we'll just do that. We'll kind of darken these down so they go with the letters. And you know, ultimately, if you mess it up, it's just a journal. So not the end of the world. And I don't really want to start over with this. I want to keep going. So I'm going to keep going and I'm going to pretend that I meant to do that. All right. Maybe I'll fill that in too. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm okay with that. Just makes it look more more abstract. The letter looks more abstract. Okay, one, two, three. We're gonna start the S here. One, two, three, we're gonna skip, so. And 
Yes. See if I can do this in right. <laughs> Maybe I should make it like that one so that they look the same. Yeah, we'll let that one be different. I'm just going to make these a little heavier so they match the other ones up there. By the time we paint it, I think you should tone it down a little bit, but maybe it'll be a little easier to see. I probably should have printed a picture of Paul Clay's work to show you, but um, you can you can just Google it. If you, if you Google Paul Clay, and that's again, that's spelled K-L-E-E. -E. If you Google that, you should be able to see the works that inspired this it'll be pretty obvious okay so we're down to because You can see I'm getting a little bit of wicking because I have this sharpie on top of that uh, on top of that napkin, so I'm getting a little bit of wicking, but not a lot because it is it is mostly sealed. Um, let's see. It's actually a little challenging to fill a big box with a letter because we just don't do that very often. It's not something that, that we're used to doing, so it's a, it's a bit of a challenge to think that way. I thought it would be a little easier. I mean, it's not hard. It's just you have to pay attention to what you're doing, which is what happened there. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing because space, but it's okay. I think... Maybe we'll fill in some other things uh, that are black. We'll put a little black around as one of the colors. Um, could just, you know, dot a little black around. And then that should help blend it in. It'll make it look like it's on purpose, which is all we need. We just want it to look like we did it on purpose. I don't sing because I'm happy. Space, space, two spaces here. because I'm happy. If I wanted to put in a period, I could put it there, but yeah, you know, that might be. I could put one down here, make that one of our little black spaces. <laughs> or not, I don't think we really need it. Honestly, I don't know what uh, what Paul Clee did, or Clay, sorry. I, now I'm thinking about how to spell it. Um, I'm not sure what he did with punctuation, so I, I kind of feel like he probably just ignored it, so that's what we're going to do. All right, I don't think because I'm happy. Um, space one. You can see this takes a little bit of planning because you need to make a grid and then decide where everything's going to go, kind of work out how that's going to fit into the grid. 
you could just freehand it. Um, if you didn't want to use a grid, you could, you could, like I said, you could just draw some lines across here and fill the whole, you know, the line top to bottom and, and still have some spaces to fill it in. You won't have quite as many. They'll be larger, um, but you'll still have some. Um, so you could do it that way. I just thought this would be a little different. We might try something a little different. Two spaces because this would be fun with any quote. This would be something fun to do um, on some, you know, work out the grid on, on some watercolor paper. Um, and put in somebody's name. It would be cool if you if you know somebody's having a baby and they've chosen the name um, or once the baby's born uh, and the name is on the announcement. It would be fun to make one of these with the baby's name on it to hang in the nursery. Be a piece of art that a child could have um, throughout his or her life. It would be cool. Have this abstract piece of art made from his or her name. Or if you have, you know, friends that are getting married, you could put their first names. Jack and Jill or whatever right I don't sing because I'm happy I'm happy because two spaces I I've I've looked at these um, for a while I've seen other people do them but I have not done one so this is my first attempt so I'm hoping I'm hoping it turns out on this music paper because I've never seen anybody do it on a printed background of any kind. Um, I've only seen them do it on mixed media paper. Um, watercolor paper, those kinds of things. All right, and then we have the top and the bottom. Um, let's see. So we've got a little black there. I do want to. I do want to kind of kind of put some, maybe some, just black, kind of pieces other places just to kind of balance it out so it looks a little more intentional. That I think that'll help. Right. And you don't have to worry about um, the. Sharpie running. It's an alcohol-based marker, so the watercolor shouldn't shouldn't make it run. <laughs> when I've I've done things in the past where I did Sharpie and then I did watercolor with them and, and they didn't. So one, two, three, four. We need one more just so it's not even. Let's do one over here near a letter. There we go. That kind of spaces it out a little bit and gives us gives us a little bit of that so we can see. Okay, so I have never um, used these watercolors before. That it is an inexpensive set that I wanted to try out um, before I before I buy some uh, for an art class, art project. So I'm I'm hoping that they work pretty well. So that's kind of my thought. This is a tiny little brush so I don't think I don't think I'll be using this brush with it um, but I did bring 
uh, my cat tongue, my cat tongue brush, which is my favorite brush, because I like I like that it's rounded, so you can kind of get into edges, but it's not it's not very big. It's kind of fine. Okay, I'm gonna start with my lightest color and move to the darkest, I think. And I'm just, I'm well, and, I, and you really don't have to do that. You could start pretty much with any color. Uh, the idea would be to just maybe put your colors on, uh, like put all of your yellow in and then, and then wash your brush, wipe your brush off and go back and put in I'll probably be sorry I did this. I put down some paper towels. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm messy, but I'd, I'd really like it over here where I could see it a little better. Because I'm messy. Um, so you just want to kind of choose places throughout, uh, throughout the composition to add some color. There's no right or wrong. I mean, you could, of course, consult a color wheel. Um, you could use... Um, analogous colors, which would be colors that are on either side on a color wheel. Um, you could use um, complementary colors, which would be opposite of each other on a color wheel. So you can choose any color scheme you, you want. I'm probably just going to kind of randomly choose colors because I like a lot of color. And I like bright colors, um, so I want to I want to put these down. So I'll just kind of be moving around. I like this because you can still see the music under it. At least you can the yellow. So we know you'll be able to see the music there. So that's good because we can still see the music paper, which was what I was hoping for. I watch this <clears throat> if it if it seems like this is taking a really long time, which it kind of might. <laughs> um, I'll probably just speed up the video here. So if we hit if we hit this point and I hit speed up, it's it's because I don't think you really want to watch me watch me do this all over. Um, okay, <clears throat> sorry. I haven't spoken because I've had it on speed up, and so <laughs> suddenly it's like, oh, I have to talk. Um, so I like I like the colors. Um, I hit it with the the heat tool as you as you saw, um, but I think some of it's still a little damp. Um, but it looks like a few of the places I probably need to go back and go over some of those lines. Maybe all of them. So, so I don't know. I'm trying to decide. <laughs> Do I need to go over all the lines or not? Some of them. Looks like maybe some of them are under a little bit of paint, but not too many. Um, so, because they're already heavier, in, in a lot of uh, the work you see, these lines would not be heavier. And so they would... Uh, maybe blend a little more with the background. Um, I I don't think it's too hard to read. You can still read it. I mean, you kind of have to you kind of have to check it out to see, uh, but I think it's okay. So I think the only other thing maybe would be if I wanted to add some doodles around the edge, and I'm not I'm not sure I do. I think I kind of like the way this looks on its own. Um, so I think I'm going to stop there for now. I, I may come back later and do something else to it after I have looked at it for a little while. Um, but I like the idea of this, and so I wanted to try it. So this is this has been a fun experiment. I like that you can see the music paper behind some of the lighter colors. Some of the darker ones were obviously very dark, and you couldn't you couldn't see through some of those. But most of them you can see. There's <clears throat> there's music actually in the background. So I think we're going to call this one done. Um, for now, I, and I think maybe I might go back later. I might go back and add some doodling around the edges. 
Okay, so there has been some time that passed, as you can probably tell by looking at um, the the piece. Um, I had I had filmed the ending. Um, I'd kind of just left it the way it was after I dried it with the the heating tool, which you saw it was the end of the speed up section. And then I just talked a little bit about the colors and things like that, and and. Um, finished it up and, and that was kind of the end of it. But after I turned off the camera, I decided I really needed to go over all the lines again, um, just for definition. So I did that and I thought it looked a lot better. So I wanted to come back and show you. And then of course, I just couldn't resist doodling around the edges. I just did. I'm not sure if it's better or worse with the doodles, but it's, it doesn't really matter because it's just it's just kind of a junk journal. Um, notebook so I was just playing anyway so we have I think now come to the end um, of, of how it looks uh, so if you like this I hope you will give me a thumbs up leave me a comment please subscribe to my channel that would be great um, I'm happy to talk to you about this so if there's if there's something you want to see if there's a quote you want me to use please leave me a comment down below. I'll be, be happy to talk to you, chat with you about it. Um, until next time, remember, use what you have to make your life more beautiful. Bye.